Viewer discretion is advised. He had created the Buddha in his mind and manifested it into reality. At first, it was a benevolent being, but over time, it grew more sinister. And soon enough, he had forgotten its face. All he could remember was a monk with a face blurred with malevolence, hunting him. The entity hunted him day and night, wherever he went. The foundation moved him to another secured location, but it only resulted in more sacrifices. It made its way calmly through the Hall of Fire from the task force. The 50 caliber round staggered it and followed by an explosive that set off near its foot. When the dust had settled, the monk was nowhere to be found. The task force cheered as they finally eliminated it, but it was only wishful thinking. They heard an evil chant from behind them further down the walkway, and it grew stronger. They turned around and saw the monk was already behind them. Its eyes were filled with wrath and fury as it struck them down with brutal efficiency. The bodies fell. The monk stopped chanting and regained its calm composure. It set its eyes down the hallway and slowly walked over the bodies and spent bullet casings as the alarm blared. Nothing will stop it from reaching its goal. Its creator, its inventor, its father will die tonight. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-1447. SCP-1447-1, also known as Tulpa, is a quasi-physical humanoid entity that resembles an Asian male dressed in traditional Tibetan Buddhist monastic garb. Its face is visually distorted and indistinct, even when viewed on high-speed footage. 1447-1 typically remains in constant motion, frequently in excess of 200 km per hour for approximately 20 hours a day. During this period, it constantly attacks the interior of its cell, reinforcing 1447-1's containment unit with hardened steel plating has been successful in reducing the incidence of breaches, but has not proven totally immune to 1447-1's efforts. 1447-1 is very capable of exploiting small breaches in its containment unit and is able to insert itself through apertures and openings as small as 200 micrometers in diameter. 1447-1 is largely resistant to standard issue sidearms. However, higher caliber munitions appear to temporarily disrupt 1447-1's physical form, causing it distress. Additionally, high-powered weaponry has been effective at forcing it back into containment. High explosives have proven effective at completely dissipating 1447-1. However, when attacked in this manner, 1447-1 has shown the capacity to rematerialize anywhere in the immediate vicinity, ignoring any intervening barriers. Furthermore, during a containment breach, 1447-1 apparently goaded security personnel into employing explosives near the containment area of another SCP, resulting in an additional breach event. Attempts at communication with the entity to determine sentience remain inconclusive. Although 1447-1 responds to questions, its vocalizations are quite unintelligible. Analysis has revealed them to be garbled versions of mantras in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, repeated hundreds of times a second. 1447-1 is not implacably hostile to human life and remains focused on reaching and killing 1447-2. However, Foundation personnel who attempt to impede its progress are subject to attack. Furthermore, if frustrated in its efforts, it has been observed to become indiscriminately violent. 1447-2 is a Caucasian male in his 50s who claims to be a computer hardware and software entrepreneur. 1447-2 has been unable to explain the continued activity in the public eye of his namesake, a figure who shares SCP-1447-2's alleged identity and life history, but has speculated that he may be an imposter hired by his business associates. His counterpart is to be kept under surveillance by Foundation personnel as another possibility that either 1447-2 or his counterpart is an entity similar to 1447-1. Tell us, what is the nature of your connection to SCP-1447-1? That's what you call the Tulpa, isn't it? 
That is what we call the entity that has thus far attacked two of our facilities in an effort to get to you. I created it. You created 1447-1? Yes. After 85, I resumed my travels in India, in Tibet. I guess I was seeking a spiritual experience. You were a tourist. Yes, of sorts. I found a group of monks in Qinghai who said they would teach me how to create a tulpa. What did you hope to accomplish? I guess I didn't have any ulterior motives. To manifest my thoughts, to impose my will on reality? You couldn't control this tulpa. At first, I could. I wanted to manifest the Buddha. You probably know him as the Fat Buddha, but he wasn't a Buddha. He was a folkloric deity. The monks told me to choose something else, but I became fixated on it. If you don't mind me saying so, footage we have of 1447-1 does not resemble the Fat Buddha. No, over time he changed. He became thinner, meaner looking. Its behavior changed. Yes, I imagined him jolly, like a prankster. He would play practical jokes on me and the other monks. But over time, they grew more and more spiteful. What happened? He began to do things like putting pots of scalding hot water over doors. He hid snakes in our sandals, harmless first, then poisonous. I wasn't aware there were venomous snakes in Tibet. There's one, the Thea's Viper. But you're right, their habitat is hundreds of miles south of the monastery. I didn't understand how he had gotten it. And now you do. His speed, yes. One day, I realized I couldn't visualize his face anymore. That was a turning point. Yes, he became murderous. The monks caught him trying to cut my throat during the night. They were able to see the tulpa by this stage? Yes, they were afraid the tulpa would kill them too. How do you account for these? Dr. Rolfus shows SCP-1447-2 a number of recent press cuttings concerning his namesake. I cannot. There is, in fact, no evidence that left the United States during the period we are discussing. In fact, I have copious evidence that during the time you claim to have been in Tibet, he founded another company. Maybe he hired someone to impersonate me. Rest assured, we'll be keeping both of you under close observation. No, that's not good enough. I want my life back. You don't have the right to detain me here. You are here because you are currently the target of an apparently supernatural being that has thus far cost this organization an extraordinary amount of money and dozens of lives to contain. We have every right. Tell me, what happens if 1447-1 kills you? I don't have to listen to this. Will 1447-1 cease to exist if you die? Answer the question. I refuse to answer! Interview terminated by Dr. Rolfus. According to an addendum, 1447-2 has been informed of the death of his counterpart, and he requested a full medical checkup, which was granted. Tissue and hair samples taken from 1447-2 showed no anomalous characteristics. 1447-2 remains convinced that he will be successful in the destruction of 1447-1 through the application of methods of concentration and meditative practice. Successive breaches have indicated no change in the capabilities of 1447-1 to date. However, it is noteworthy that the entity's activity within its containment unit is severely curtailed during periods in which 1447-2 engages in focused meditation on the abolition of the tulpa. Thermal imaging reveals that 1447-1 is almost completely still during these periods, adopting the Vajra meditation position. Foundation consultants versed in the Tibetan Buddhist faith have posited that 1447-1 may be sufficiently sentient to be able to meditate on its own existence, thus reasserting itself. Proposals are under consideration to incorporate means of disrupting 1447-1's meditation into its containment unit. The incorporation of a hydrochloric acid bath similar to that employed in the containment of other Keter class SCPs is presently considered too likely to lead to a breach via the delivery mechanism. On the other hand, 
Additional possibilities include microwave emitters to heat the interior of the unit and high volume sonics proven to inhibit concentration. Current theories indicate that the death of 1447-2 at the hands of 1447-1 or otherwise is unlikely to result in the destruction of the tulpa, given its current level of autonomy. Controlled infliction of pain on 1447-2 shows no corresponding change in behavior on the part of 1447-1. However, 1447-1 is currently containable largely by virtue of the fact that it consistently seeks out and attempts to kill 1447-2. Freed from this compulsion, the entity would become completely unpredictable. For the foreseeable future, containment efforts must focus on further reducing the incidence of breach attempts and minimizing the exposure of other Foundation assets to 1447-1. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out our description below on how to submit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.